You caught me eating lunch. Hello, welcome to Travel Shots Live, where I bring you unedited footage of all the places I travel. Where am I? I know I had people guessing. I had a couple comments. One of you thought I was going to be heading to Bulgaria. Another of you thought I was heading towards, um, oh my God, what was the other? Montenegro. But like I wrote in the comments, close but no cigar kind of thing. I am currently in Belgrade, so <laughs> Belgrade, Serbia. I had a bird back there. You ruined my just ruined my uh, my vision and my thoughts. But yes, I'm in Belgrade, Serbia, and I'm eating lunch, and I'm extremely tired still. But I'm going to show you what I got for lunch. I want you to check this out. I got this at the um, the bakery or the deli. There's a grocery store right close to me. And if you have never had, let me show you. This is called, it's made with cabbage and ground beef and rice. And it's called um, halukis. And my grandmother used to make this. I ate this 40 years ago when I always went to my grandmother's house. Mm. I haven't had holupkis since. And when I saw this sitting in the case when I went grocery shopping last night, I was like, OMG, I have to have it. Look at it. That's the filling. It is so, so good. All right. Mm. One other thing, I'm going to tell you a story. I also picked up some kind of um, casserole. See? Oh, my camera's all over the place. It's some kind of casserole. It's really good. It's made with noodles and cheese and I don't know, something else, but it's good. Mm, I'll put it down now. Mama always said don't don't talk with your mouth open. <laughs> so anyway, I made it I made it here to Belgrade. It was only a one hour flight. However, you know how travel days are. You gotta have three hours to get there before you leave. So you gotta prep, go through immigration, security, blah, blah, blah. Which everything went smooth, no hassles at the airport. The plane flight was cool, <laughs> except um, there's barely any leg room. And this poor guy who had a seat next to me, luckily they were they allowed him to move way up to the front for extra leg room. But this guy, I swear to God, was six foot five, maybe taller. I'm five foot nine. I had a hard time squeezing into this little, little space, right? Because when you hop in the Balkans, they have those little prop planes and they're really small. It's not like the major airline carriers. It's a small kind of airline prop plane for, the, for an hour flight. And the leg room is ridiculously small and my knees were hitting up against the seat. And this guy had to literally crunch his legs up to his neck. I said, this is ridiculous. He goes, yeah, I asked her, and he was American too. <laughs> and he, I asked her, he goes, yeah, he goes, I got a seat. And he goes, once everybody sits down, she can see if there's an empty seat and I'm going up front so I get more leg room. So I actually, it was a two seater next to the window and I got the whole two seats to myself. So that went really cool when he moved. Okay, now here's the fun stuff. Uh, my Airbnb host was gracious enough to pick me up at the airport and saved me $50, mind you, in a taxi fee because I am literally probably a good 20, 25 minute drive from the airport. And he, they told me it was about a $50 taxi fee, right? Um, so anywho, they're like, yeah, we could pick you up, no problem. It was a man, wife kind of team, you know. So she's, uh, I'm late, I'm 20 minutes late, the plane was late. She's standing out there with a sign with my name on it, but she didn't even see me walk out. <laughs> she said, I'll recognize you, but I recognized her, so luckily we connected, no problem. Her husband was waiting at the car because they're not allowed to pull their cars up to the, um, you know, where they pick up the passengers. It's only buses and that's it and vans. That's all it's allowed up to the front of the airport. So he's waiting in the parking lot 
while she gets me. So while she's texting him, she's like, oh, I'm glad I got you. And I told her, I'm sorry, the plane was late. And she goes, well, you know, we don't mind driving you, but we have a very small car and we just want to forewarn you, you know, it's small and it doesn't have any air conditioning and it, but it, you know, it gets us from point A to point B. And I'm like, I said, I don't care. I said, as long as it moves, I don't care. Like, thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing because you're saving me money, right? So anywho, so her husband's ready. He's like, come on. He comes down, he helps me with my backpack. We all walk up to the parking lot. And then, you know, I'm looking at the cars in the parking lot. They all look pretty nice. I'm like, oh, I don't know what their definition of bad looking car or small is. But then I saw the car. What? Oh my God. If you could picture a small 1980s model box car, this is what this was. All faded out. It's a manual stick, right? I don't care, but here's the bad part. Okay, oh, and the name of the brand of the car is a Scala, S-C-A-L-A. -A. If you know what a Yugo looks like, I mean, if you don't know what either one is, look it up online, Scala Yugo. Real small box car, barely can fit four people in there, right? I don't care, right? But here's the problem, okay? Walk up there and he's getting ready to open the trunk and I'm seeing something dripping out of the back left part of his bumper, right? And I go, oh, are you leaking water? And he goes, no, that's gas. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? I said, that's, that's gas? And the wife is like, oh, don't worry, don't worry. He just filled up the gas tank, but it leaks. So I'm like, Okay, and this wasn't just a, like a little teeny drip, like it was forming a puddle, bro, like this big, and it's dripping, drip, 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 and I'm thinking, are we even going to make it? Like, is this safe? So all this is running through my mind. They let me sit in the, in the front with him because there was more leg room, and she sat in the back, and they're like, roll down all the windows. You know, we don't have AC, and besides that, you, the gas is going to be a really, really bad smell on the way <laughs> So I'm like, okay. So I kept asking the dude, I was like, how far is the apartment from here? And he goes, oh, only five more kilometers, you know, which I don't know what that is in American miles, but I'm thinking to myself, it's far. All the time I'm smelling strong, intense gas fumes, okay, as we're driving and sitting still. He was on the highway. It was moving smooth at first, and then all of a sudden it just stopped. We were in five o'clock traffic and it just stopped. And he wasn't about to stop. He got off on the side, you know, the, the side off the highway where you it's emergency lane. He puts on his flashers and he's cruising. I mean, he's hauling butt down the emergency lane. Like this guy wasn't about to stop with this tank leaking gas, right? which I was glad he wasn't doing because the number one, I was thinking this is dangerous. And number two, he's going to run out of gas on the highway, right? So we make it, we take an alternative route. He drops his wife off, I guess, at her job in town. And then it's just me and him and we're driving and he's and he's just shifting gears and going crazy and weaving through traffic. And as we're sitting at the light, you can just smell the gas. And all was running through my mind at the moment was, I hope to God that nobody who's smoking a cigarette decides to throw a butt out behind his car. Kaboom, right? That's all that's going through my head. And I'm thinking, is $50 really worth my life? <laughs> I really had my self questioning. If I would have known what this guy's car looked like and everything, I probably wouldn't even taken the ride. But it was like, they came all that way out there with a leaky gas tank to get me. And they survived, so I was like, okay. I mean, that's all part of travel. That's the adventure, and it was dangerous, but I did it anyway. So, long story short, we made it. The car didn't blow up, but I'm gonna tell you what, the minute he parked that car in front of the Airbnb apartment, I got out of that sucker so fast. I was like, I was almost ready to fall to the ground and kiss it and go, oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, 
God for saving me. And then I felt bad for this guy because they're like in their 60s. And I was thinking, you can't afford a car? Because they were saying like, we, well, if we uh, try to sell this car, we're not going to get any money out of it anyway. So we're just going to keep it. It still runs. Now, I'll grant you, this car actually does run pretty nice. It's not bad at all. It ran really super smooth. Sorry, I had a message on there. And um, I was impressed. And he said they got the last model of the Scala. So that was the last model. Now he told me it was a 2008, but I swear that car looked older than that. I don't know, I think we were lost in translation. I think it was a 1988 is what that car was. <laughs> so anywho, I didn't get to the apartment till like 6.30. I needed groceries. Luckily, there's a grocery store right over here. And I am gonna show you more of my apartment and the neighborhood as time goes on. So please stick around. You're going to see Serbia at its best, okay? But I had to run to the grocery store. I had to get me a SIM card. By the time I got back last night, and I apologize because I didn't do the video, I was so wiped out. I didn't actually sit down to eat dinner until 9.30 last night. And then I was like, oh, I just can't do it. So that's why I sent out that community post to you guys to let you know what was happening. And then I'm alive. Yay. So anyway, um, stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't already, because we're still moving through the Balkans and Serbia is a big part of this journey. Um, I'll be here for a good 28 days booked the place for a month so there's a lot to do and see in Belgrade this is a big city this is not Skopje I can tell you that like or don't like up to you and subscribe I wish you would comment do you have any questions for me about travel I would love to answer those questions for you I'll do the best I can and hey share the video let's let everybody know Tammy's in town. She's in Serbia. All right, guys. I love you. And I'm glad I'm still here to make these videos for you because it was a little sketchy. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.